Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss abdominal pain. Its causes, the differential diagnosis by location, how to approach a patient and the diagnosis. Let's first divide the origin of abdominal pain on the basis of location. As the right hypochondrium has the liver, a part of the pancreas, lungs, the diseases of these organs will result in pain in this quadrant. So, cholecystitis, cholangitis, pancreatitis, pleurisy, hepatitis, Bergieri syndrome, which involves the liver, are associated with pain in this quadrant. Similarly, the left hypochondrium has the spleen, stomach, the pancreas, and the diaphragm. So, pain in this region should point towards splenic infarct, rupture or an abscess, gastritis, gastric ulcer, pancreatitis and or a subdiaphragmatic recess. The epigastric region has the esophagus, the stomach, the aorta and pancreas. Also, as we saw, epigastric region, the pain is referred to the epigastric region in case of an MI. So, epigastric region will be associated with peptic ulcer disease, gastritis, pancreatitis, MI, esophagitis, pericarditis, ruptured aortic aneurysm, and GERD. Moving on to the right groin, uh, appendicitis, salpingitis, nephrolithiasis, or kidney stone, inguinal hernia, ectopic pregnancy, or inflammatory bowel disease will lead to pain in the right groin left groin will sh it will exclusively show pain in the case of irritable bowel syndrome and diverticulitis in the umbil umbilical region pain will be seen in case of appendicitis uh, early appendicitis uh, in case of a ruptured aortic aneurysm as we already saw in epigastric region and in bowel obstruction as it is obvious that the intestines are present in this region. This is an overview of the distribution of disease which manifests as abdominal pain. We will be using this diagram to diagnose a patient based on the location of pain. Now at the same time we should also know the conditions which are associated with a diffuse and a non-localized pain gastroenteritis, bowel ischemia, irritable bowel syndrome, peritonitis, diabetes mellitus, familial Mediterranean fever, metabolic diseases, neurologic diseases, they don't have localized pain as a symptom. So we should look out for these conditions if a patient is presenting with the diffuse and non-localized pain. Let's discuss the important causes of abdominal pain. Firstly, uh, pain uh, which er originates in the abdomen or it might be referred or pain due to metabolic diseases or neurologic diseases or various toxicities can lead to pain in the abdomen. Starting with origin in the abdomen, a perforated appendix, a pelvic inflammatory disease, obstruction of the intestines or the bile duct or the ureter, then the an embolus or uh, a sickle cell crisis or appendicitis will lead to pain in the abdomen. Moving on to the referred pain, uh, an acute MI, myocarditis, endocarditis or pericarditis or uh, uh, congestive heart failure, pulmonary embolism or pneumothorax can give a referred pain to the abdomen. Moving on to the metabolic, uh, diabetes, uremia, hyperlipidemia, familial Mediterranean fever, porphyria, C1 esterase deficiency which leads to angioneurotic edema. These will also cause pain in the abdomen. In uh, neurologic pain are herpes zoster and causalgia as we already discussed in the pain video. And these will lead to pain in the abdomen. Uh, last of all, to toxicity, lead poisoning will also cause pain in the abdomen. The most common causes of abdominal pain you will see in the clinics will be mostly due to uh, obstruction of intestines or a urologic pain or non-specific abdominal pain or due to appendicitis. So keep these in mind while in the clinics. In obstructive conditions, if the small bowel is 
involved the pain will be poorly localized it will be peri umbilical or supra umbilical and as the intestine uh, progressively dilates the colicky nature of the pain will diminish however one can differentiate colonic obstruction from the fact that uh, the intensity will be lower compared to small bowel obstruction and it will be commonly located in the infra umbilical area and it will more commonly be radiating to the lumbar region uh, obstruction in the gall bladder will uh, give rise to pain in the right upper quadrant as can be expected from its anatomic location and i would also like to point out the fact that if the common bile duct is obstructed it will also give rise to referred pain in the upper lumbar region however one can differentiate it that the pain uh, of origin uh, will be epigastric now obstruction of the urinary bladder will give rise to dull low intensity pain in the suprapubic region in contrast we should remember that acute obstruction of the intravesicular portion of the ureter will give rise to severe suprapubic and flank pain which will radiate to the penis scrotum and the inner part of the thigh in case of vascular causes uh, an embolism or thrombosis of the superior mesenteric artery or the impending rupture of an aortic aneurysm can uh, be associated with a diffuse or severe pain also it is a characteristic of superior mesenteric artery occlusion that the patient will present with continuous diffuse pain in the absence of tenderness and rigidity moving on to referred pain uh, one should always consider the possibility of intrathoracic diseases in uh, abdominal pain especially if the pain is in the upper abdomen intrathoracic diseases include mi uh, pulmonary infarction esophageal diseases pneumonia pericarditis which are the most common conditions presenting as a abdominal emergency also how will you differentiate whether a pain in the abdomen is being referred or is originating from the abdomen uh, in cases of referred pain it uh, the pain will diminish during the inspiratory phase of uh, respiration however if the pain is originating in the abdomen it will be present throughout respiration if a patient is immunocompromised one must remember that cytomegalovirus protozoa or fungal infections can cause uh, abdominal pain also uh, if uh, an immunocompromised patient uh, uh, presents with uh, symptoms of splenic abscess then candida and salmonella should also be taken in the differential diagnosis now uh, neurologic causes have already been discussed in the pain video you can check that out we are not going to discuss this again here now for the most important part how will you approach a patient first of all if a patient presents with massive intra abdominal hemorrhage there are no absolute contraindications to surgery moving on to the history one should take the age and uh, the time and onset of pain the characteristics of pain whether it is localized or diffuse which quadrant is involved the duration the location and the sites of radiation then uh, a, a, any associated uh, symptoms along with the pain any change in bowel habits which will help us in uh, including or excluding obstruction as in the di differential diagnosis and uh, then the menstrual history which is essential because uh, in a gravid uterus abdominal and pelvic pain may occur which will not require any operation also the chronological sequence of events which occur surrounding the abdominal pain is more important than the location of the pain moving on to the physical examination 
first of all the amount of information we get from such an examination will be directly proportional to the gentleness and the thoroughness of the examiner if a patient with peritoneal inflammation has been examined in a rough way accurate assessment by the next examiner is nearly impossible also certain certain maneuvers like eliciting rebound tenderness by sudden release of a deep palpating hand is both cruel and unnecessary the same information can be obtained by gentle percussion of the abdomen which is far more preci uh, precise and localizing also uh, asking the patient to cough will elicit true rebound tenderness without the need to place a hand on the abdomen by these maneuvers you can both minimize the pain the patient has to go through and make it easier for the next examiner to do a accurate examination one must uh, always keep in mind uh, that uh, in cases of pelvic peritonitis the abdominal signs and symptoms may entirely be absent so uh, careful pelvic and rectal examinations are mandatory in every patient with abdominal pain and last of all the auscultation of the abdomen is considered to be one of the least revealing aspects of the physical examination Uh, laboratory uh, evaluations will help you rule out different causes um, based on the urine analysis or enzyme levels uh, serum bilirubin levels liver function tests etc and if suspecting uh, colonic obstruction uh, one should avoid barium enema or oral administration of barium sulfate and last of all a ct scan will reveal uh, the involvement of the pancreas or spleen or appendix and should be used for diagnostic purposes that will be all for today thank you